And I would also love to have uh, maybe a two combo jackets on the front side here because uh, there's uh, plenty of space. But uh... Hi everybody and welcome! I got another exciting video for you today and we're going to talk about the brand new Apple Mac Studio. If you follow my channel, you know that I'm very intrigued by this M1 technology. I have the original M1 and also the M1 Max from last year. And now Apple recently announced and released the Mac Studio. So in this video, we're briefly going to look at the Mac Studio. And I'm also going to talk about my experience with using the M1 technology for music production, graphics work and video editing. So let's take the tour. Right, so let's begin talking about the connectability and the I.O. ports available on the Mac Studio. So basically it looks like a twin hamburger of a Mac Mini. So you have basically two older Mac Mini stacked on top of each other. And on the front side we have two Thunderbolt ports and this memory slot. So uh, it's a great to have some ports on the front side. And on the back side we have four Thunderbolt 4 ports, a 10 GB Ethernet, the power connector, and two USB-A's, HDMI and a Pro high impedance jacket for uh, the headphones. So uh, we can instantly see that there's uh, actually room for two additional ports. So I would have loved to see uh, two additional ports here because uh, you can't have enough ports because as with the uh, M1 Max and with the, M the original M1, I always have to use these uh, like uh, USB dongles or Thunderbolt dongles. And this particular one is the Belkin Thunderbolt dock station. I did a previous review on this dock. But basically you want more ports and uh, I mean on the M1 Max we have two USB-C ports on the left side, uh, Thunderbolt ports and uh, another on the right side here. But that's only like three ports and they are quickly eaten up if you have a lot of external gear that you're connecting to your, to your Mac. Okay, so I actually think that the design of the Mac Studio is really sleek, it looks professional and it's a very warm welcome that we have some extra ports on, uh, on the front side. I actually own one of these really old Mac Minis and it was always a big hassle to always go to the back side to be able to hook up some USB gear. So it's a warm welcome to have some ports on the front side. Okay, so the Mac Studio comes in two variations. Either you can have the M1 Mac CPU with 10 cores up to 32 cores GPU and 64 gigs of unified memory. But you can also choose the new M1 Ultra CPU, which is basically two M1 Max CPUs hooked together. Now, one very important factor to know regarding the new Mac Studios is that they are not upgradable. And that means that uh, both the memory and the storage are soldered in these chips. So make sure you select the right model regarding memory and storage when you select this uh, Mac Studio, if you're going to, to buy one. I personally decided not to go for the Mac Studio because uh, I bought the M1 Max and I'm very satisfied with both the original M1 and the M1 Max for all over general music production and sound design and making video editing. Now the M1 Max here is already extremely capable when it comes to video editing and music production and all kinds of uh, regular graphics work. Now another important factor regarding 3D rendering on the M1 chips is that the Blender 3.1 now supports the Metal GPU rendering and using the Metal GPU for rendering will uh, significantly enhance the rendering times uh, when running on the M1 chips. So that's a really big plus from, from the Blender development team. Okay, so what's more in store here? You can have up to 128 gigs of unified memory on the M1 Ultra and that should be pretty sufficient for a long long time. Uh, no matter what kind of work you do, if you do graphics work or 3D rendering or video editing. 2.5 faster CPU up to 3.4 faster GPU performance. 2.2 faster machine learning. Yeah. Right, so the Mac Studio can have up to 9 streams of 8K ProRes video playback. Who edits in 8K anyway? Do you? I don't. And it supports up to five displays. So you can have uh, four of this uh, Pro Display XDR and one HDMI display simultaneously. And that's uh, plenty of pixels rendered at the same time. And the Mac Studio also brings H.264, HEVEC and ProRes and code the code via hardware. And that's really nice if you're working with video editing. 
And then there's the usual brag of how much faster this is than previous generations, etc, etc. And finally, Apple also wants to highlight their new Apple Studio display, obviously. And, and there's been plenty of rage on the internet regarding this power cable for the studio display that you can't apparently disconnect it without a special tool. So that's uh, the new Mac Studio. Now, I've been extremely happy with both my original Apple M1, the 8 gigs version, and also the M1 Max. Right, so when comparing the original M1 with 8 gigs of unified memory with this M1 Max with the 32 gigs of unified memory, there's actually not that big of a difference when running general music production tasks like adding, stacking up tons of audio tracks, tons of plugins, and uh, all these more demanding plugins like Omnisphere and uh, Contact. Contact, by the way, is now also M1 compatible, so make sure to upgrade to the latest version so you can make use of the benefits of the M1 CPU on, on Contact. Because I guess, like me, you have plenty of sample libraries that run on the Contact sampler, so I'm very happy that Native Instruments finally managed to compile and build the Contact sampler for the ARM64 architecture and the Apple M1 Silicon. Now you've been asking me plenty of questions regarding if the M1 Air would be sufficient for general purpose audio production like mixing, mastering and recording audio and adding some plugins. Now I can obviously only speak from my experience with the M1 Pro 8 gigs unified memory and this M1 Max with 32 gigs. And the M1 with 8 gigs unified memory gave me plenty of headroom when just recording audio tracks, stacking up plugins, doing these general mixing and mastering tasks. Now if you want to check out my previous tests on the M1 and the M1 Max you can click the card up here. Now although the M1 Air lacks those two extra cores that you get with the M1 Pro, I'm pretty confident that you can get uh, plenty of music production out of the M1 Air too. Okay, so who is the Mac Studio for? Who is going to benefit from this really insane CPU processing power of the M1 Ultra Mega processor with this insane amount of unified memory? I truly believe that uh, this uh, M1 Ultra, the top model of the new Mac Studio, is uh, probably targeted at video editing professionals and if you're working with the 3D rendering since uh, Blender 3D now also offers uh, to render through the Metal GPU. But for all of you who's working with music production, I truly believe that the base model of the Mac Studio or using some of these uh, uh, MacBook Pros is uh, well enough and sufficient if you're working with music production, sound design, mixing, mastering and whatever tasks. Right, so that's my first impression of the Mac Studio. Now let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. As always, if you're new to my channel, make sure to subscribe, hit the like and that notification bell so that you get a notice as soon as I drop new videos. Now you can continue and watch my next video. My name is Matthias, see you in the next video. Bye!